Hey everyone and welcome back to our EFA 2017 coverage. There's loads of stuff on offer at this show but one of them is mobile phones and I've been checking out all the latest and greatest to actually see what is on offer. So we'll start our journey over at the Sony booth with the XZ1 and then the XZ1 Compact. Both of these are very high-end phones, both running a Snapdragon 835 with 4GB of RAM, though the XZ1 does have more storage with 64 versus 32 and a larger and higher resolution display with a 5.2 inch 1080p HDR display on the XZ1 and then a 4.6 inch 720p non-HDR display on the XZ1 Compact. I really like the feel in the hand of both phones, though it's noticeably the compact that does feel better to me, and you don't really notice so much the lack of that bezel-less design that you'll find on things like the LG V30 and then the S8. Both of these do share the same battery though, with 2700 milliamp hours. Not entirely sure this is going to be that much of a concern, especially on the compact, but that is quite low compared with some of the other phones that we do have in this price range on the market. But regardless, I should be getting both of these phones in for review shortly, so do stay tuned for even more coverage. So we're down here at the Moto and Lenovo booth, and we've got the brand new phone that was announced earlier this week, which is the Moto X4. Now this is a phone that's actually gonna be quite interesting to a lot of people because it's almost sort of taking over the price point of uh, the OnePlus series because this is going to be available in Europe for 399 euros so in pounds it's going to be quite similar and again dollars again probably quite similar to be honest with you and it's essentially a phone for people that want high performance but don't want to spend an absolutely huge amount and they want to have uh, still great features but maybe aren't that fussed about having the absolute best processor so it fits very nicely uh, in the hands. And it's got dual cameras as well, so we've got a wide angle lens here as well as a standard lens. And both of them are gonna take good pictures. I mean, it's not gonna be class leading. This is not gonna be uh, up there with like the uh, Galaxy Note 8 and things like that. But from using it, it's got a few nifty quirks. It's got a depth perception sort of mode where you can have a bokeh effect. And it definitely doesn't work as well as you'll find on the Samsung phones. But if you're after something that's not necessarily cheap and cheerful, but something that has all the features really you'd need, but isn't going to cost you an arm and a leg, then actually the X4 is definitely uh, a strong choice and worth considering. Now for our next smartphone, we've got the LG V30, something that has been grabbing all the headlines for the right reasons. We've got six inches of Quad HD display, now in the OLED flavor. It supports HDR10 in its 18 by nine native aspect ratio. We've got slim bezels with a very slight glass curve on the sides, and it's really light and it feels very good in the hand. Fingerprint sensor is on the back, arguably where it should be, which is going to appeal to people that didn't get on so well with the S8. We've got a 16 megapixel F1.6, lens with optical image stabilization, and then a wide angle f1.9 with no IS. The front facing camera doesn't seem to have changed from the G6 with the same front facing five megapixel camera, but then performance is much improved with a Snapdragon 835, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 or 128 gigs of storage, and then a 3300 milliamp hour battery. Over at the Samsung booth, they were showing off the Galaxy Note 8, which is of course a absolutely huge phone, 6.3 inches in terms of screen size. So you've got a lot of real estate, but it is a very big phone. You've got things like the S Pen that do differentiate this from other phones on the market. You've got a Snapdragon 835 or Xenos 8895, depending on your region, but you've got six gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. The main thing really for me and the main selling point really is the fact that we've got two cameras now. So we've got a portrait lens and a standard lens. Both of them have IS, which is something the iPhone 7 can't say that it's got. And you've got things like the uh, mode that can be used to blur out the background for a more sort of portrait mode-esque shot. And it does work very well. It's just very expensive at 869 pounds. And when the S8 Plus is so good, it is kind of a little bit difficult to recommend. So that's everything that was at IFA in terms of mobile phones. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And as always, a massive thank you to Philips for actually sending us out here and of course sponsoring this coverage. If you have any questions about what you've seen, obviously leave it down below. Find in the top right hand corner over there some more coverage of the show, some things other than mobile phones. 
and obviously uh, stay tuned and stay subscribed for more.